Every phone touts their value, but the Pixel 8a shows us why it's the best chief phone on the market with its intelligent AI features, charming design, and class leading software support. I am a strong supporter of phones that offer exceptional bang for the buck value, which is probably why the last few phones I have bought with my own money have all been under $500. US dollar. Google's Pixel A series has continually been in contention for the best chief phones each year and the Pixel 8a doesn't deviate from trend. Yes, it gets a minor facelift with the design but where the Pixel 8a truly impresses me is its robust software package. So far this year phones such as the Nothing Phone 2a, OnePlus 12R and Samsung Galaxy A35 all pose threats to the Pixel 8a, so Google needs to set the record straight that the Pixel 8a is the undisputed best chief phone champion when all is said and done. This could be the phone that sets the benchmark for all other mid-range phones released this year. In my Google Pixel 8a review, I test out the phone's new Google AI features like some of the ones it inherits from the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro that I have enjoyed using to save me time. On top of that, I am eager to see what improvements the Pixel 8a has with its display, battery life and camera performance to make it a satisfying upgrade over last year's Pixel 7a. Pre-orders for the Pixel 8a went live on May 7, while general availability at the Google Store and other retailers will happen starting on May 14. More important to its story, however, is that its US price remains unchanged at $499, US which is wonderful news given how rumors hinted to the possibility of a price hike. Luckily, that's not the case here, but you should know that the $499 US cost is for the 128GB of storage. If you need more, Google setting an additional 256GB option for US$559, UK shoppers will pay £499 for the Pixel 8a and £50 more increase from the Pixel 7a. Mid-range phones really get any color options besides the usual black and white options but Google's has the Pixel 8a available for different colors. You have visual obsidian and porcelain for those who prefer something more neutral toned, while the bay and alloy options add a bit of charm to the phones. My Pixel 8a test unit is the alloy version which has a deeper green tone over the mint color option for the Pixel 8. Unfortunately, Google has yet to lower the price of last year's Pixel 7a. That once it's still selling for $499 US dollar on the Google Store, but I suspect it won't be long before it gets a price cut. Even so, Pixel 8a deals going on right now make it almost entirely pointless to get the Pixel 7a at this moment, mainly because you can get the Pixel 8a for free in some instances. With the Pixel 8a design, I am really impressed by how it looks and feels very much like Google's more expensive flagship phones. For a mid-ranger, it certainly has a charm so it that few phones can match. It's definitely better look than Samsung's comparable Galaxy A35 and makes the aging iPhone SE 2022 even more dated than it is already. There are a couple of design changes that make the Pixel 8a look better than the Pixel 7a. First of all, the corners have been rounded to make it more in line with the design of the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro's design language. Secondly, it also feels much better to hold because of the matte black and polished aluminium frame it's sporting this time. It doesn't feel slippery like the glossy finish of the Pixel 7a, while the matte finish makes it much more smudge resistant. I love how the Pixel 8a always looks clean each and every time I take it out of my pocket or after using it for a period of time. Beyond these two changes, pretty much everything else about the Pixel 8a is identical including the horizontal bar on the back of the phone that contains its cameras, USB-C port, power and volume rockers. I was hoping for Google to trim the bezels around the display a bit more, there is still a wider bezel on the bottom edge of the display. 
Google's sustainable pledge continues with the Pixel 8s construction because it uses more recycled aluminium, glass and plastic while still offering an IP67 rating for water and dust resistance. This is all fantastic stuff, especially when the Pixel 8a feels incredibly well built. If my Pixel 8 Pro long term review is any indication, I suspect the Pixel 7a to hold up just as well. Google's not the first nor the last phone maker to claim extreme brightness with its displays and while some claims may seem a bit outrageous. I am happy to report that the Pixel 8a at least delivers a brighter screen compared to the Pixel 7a with its 6.1 inch OLED with a resolution of 24 100 by 1800 pixels. It adopts the same display technology found with the Pixel 8, an actual display that Google claims can reach a peak brightness of 2000 nits. Our lab testing reveals a peak brightness output 1378 nits and 1350 nits with HDR content. The lighter very much comes close to Google's own claim of 1400 nits, even though. The Pixel 8a display's peak output is still nowhere close to the 2000 nit rating Google's mentions. It's still much brighter than the Pixel 7a's meager 931 nits of brightness. I watched a bunch of 4K HDR videos outside on a sunny day and could still make them out. Another display improvement pertains to the Pixel 8s dynamic 120Hz display refresh rate are from the Pixel 7s 90Hz refresh rate. There is a noticeable difference whenever I activate smooth display mode which makes the scrolling animation around the interface look much smoother. When smooth display is off, I can tell there is a little bit of jitter when scrolling a web page or the apps panel. When it comes to the stuff I use my phone for, the 6.1 inch actual display gets the job done. The OLED panel offers wide viewing angles that doesn't distort the screen in any way, while its rich and vibrant color palette makes watching trailers like Furiosa such a visual feast to the eyes. There are plenty of flagship caliber phones in our best camera phones guide, but only one of them cost less than 500 bucks, the Pixel 7a. That phone earns the title of best camera phone value, so it's not all that out of the question for the Pixel 8a to continue the trend. On paper, the Pixel 8a is rocking a dual camera arrangement that consists of a 64 megapixel main camera paired with 13 megapixel ultra wide along with 13 megapixel selfie camera on the front. These rear cameras are no different from before, but technically the front camera has a wider 96.5 degree field of view to better fit more people into the frame for group shots. Now comes the important question, how much better is its camera performance? Now you can see some camera samples. It's no surprise that the Pixel 8a gains the same Tensor G3 chip that powers the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro which makes the mid-range phone even more compelling given how it's so close in price to the Pixel 8. 
As I detailed already, the phone feels incredibly snappy navigating around the interface and running a few apps which can also be attributed to its 120Hz refresh rate. As I suspected, the Pixel 8a delivers promising benchmark scores that pull it ahead of its predecessor in Geekbench 6. It puts up single-core and multi-core scores of 1581 and 4093 respectively, which easily surpass the 1018 single-core and 3065 multi-core scores of the Pixel 7a. These scores are what I would expect in a newer phone but it's harder to notice with everyday tasks like the occasional email reply or running any of my favorite social media apps. The Pixel 8a handles them with finesse much like the Pixel 7a before it. Gaming on the Pixel 8a is also a joy even more when its adaptive refresh rates makes everything look so smooth. In Age of Origins, the Pixel 8a maintains a smooth frame rate even when there is a ton of action happening on screen. On some other phones, I usually see a drop in frame rate during battle scenes, but this kept pace with the action, just as good as my Pixel 8 Pro. Against the Pixel 7a, the newer Tensor G3 propels the Pixel 8a to a faster frame rate of 53.7 fps in 3D Mark's Wild Life Unlimited test. In contrast, the Pixel 7a reaches 41.1 fps running the same test. The only oddity relates to how the Pixel 8a doesn't make any improvement over the Pixel 7a when it comes to rendering video with Adobe Premiere Rush. It clocks in the same time of 56 seconds as the Pixel 7a before it. Indeed, the benchmark scores show that the newest Pixel on the block is no slouch for a mid-range phone. And you know what? That's one of the reasons why I love it. Not only is it able to keep a steady frame rate with all the games I play, but it really says something about experiencing a 120Hz refresh rate on a mid phone. Everything just feels fluid. By leveraging the Tensor G3, the Pixel 8a benefits from a better battery life because it also has a slightly larger 4492 mAh battery that's off from the Pixel 7a's 4386 mAh capacity. So it's not surprising that it beats the Pixel 7a in our battery benchmark tests. The Pixel 8a reaches a time of 11 hours and 21 minutes with a full charge which is better than the Pixel 7a's tally of 10 hours and 5 minutes. But it is still a long way from reaching the extended battery life of the OnePlus 12R to be a part of the best phone battery life conversation. Still, I am able to confidently get a full day's normal use from a full charge. Strangely too, the Pixel 8a's recharge time is longer than the Pixel 7a, since it doesn't come with a charger in a box. I used a spare 30 watt charger to recharge it. After 15 and 30 minutes of charging, the Pixel 8a got to charge level of 16% and 33% respectively. That's much slower than the Pixel 7a's time, but considering how Google is still using the same 18 watt wire charging, it's no surprise it takes longer with a bigger battery. Every new phone is always trying to outdo the previous phone when it comes to the hardware, but Google's placing a lot more attention on the software with the Pixel 8a in hopes that it's enough to make it a worthier upgrade. Well, I'm happy to report that the Pixel 8a, much like the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, before it dives into the world of artificial intelligence to power its new experiences. You should know that some AI features first introduced on the Pixel 8 are trickled down to the Pixel 8a but not all of them. That's important because the more premium Pixels and 8 and 8 Pro still have their own set of exclusive AI features that justify their higher costs. For example, Video Boost remains exclusive to the Pixel 8 Pro for enhancing video captured in low light. All the new AI experiences on the Pixel 8a have one thing in common they save me time. 
This includes Bestech, Magic Editor, Audio, Magic Eraser, Gemini, Circle to Search, Live Translate, and Call Assist. The most satisfying part about these AI features is that they are not gimmicky. Take for example how we all search for stuff on Google rather than opening Chrome circle to search lets me circle over whatever app I am and perform a Google search then and there. Meanwhile I am happy about Google Pixel 8a AI assisted photo and editing tools. Magic Editor makes it a breeze for me to not only tweak my photos to make them look better but also in how it takes the painstaking process of resizing subjects. And finally, the power of AI in a phone like the Pixel 8a is exemplified with Call Assist because Google Assistant can intelligently take phone calls and relay messages for me. I have used this on a couple of occasions so far when I am busy in a conference call and I get a phone call. Rather than sending them directly to voicemail, Call Assist listens to their responses and then provides me with contextual responses to choose from. It's like having an actual office assistant who can confidently take calls for me. And with Gemini out of the box, it's better AI chatbot that can be accessed anytime on the Pixel 8a to deliver relevant responses and actions like getting me the latest ticket prices on a trip abroad. Equally important is that Pixel 8a is getting a boost to 7 years of software and security updates which is the same support Google introduced with the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro. This is incredible because the Pixel 7a only gets 3 years of major software upgrades so you can confidently know the newer 8a will get the latest major Android updates for years to come. What more I can say about the Pixel 8 is software. Android 14 out of the box is no different from my Pixel 8 Pro but unlike other mid-range phones in its price range, the key differentiator here is in how it benefits largely from its AI features. Every phone touts their value but the Pixel 8a shows us why it's the best chief phone on the market with its intelligent AI features, charming design and class leading software support. As much as I relish using flagship phones, their skyrocketing costs make them unobtainable for the many who are on a tighter budget. That's why I have been a fan of mid-range phones for years as they offer incredible value without the cost and the Pixel 8a is exactly what I crave. Even though I am disappointed that there is not a tremendous improvement to the camera performance like I have seen in years past, the Pixel 8a still manages to make it up in other ways. I think the bigger story here is how the Pixel 8a offers way more utility with its AI features and gets 7 years of software support. You can also tack on its brighter screen, longer battery life and charming design all of which adds to its credibility in being the best cheap phone around. These improvements come without upping the cost of the phone which in this day and age is a great thing in my book. This means you are getting even more value out of the Pixel 8a more so if you intend on holding it for the next 7 years. I am not one to shell out thousand dollar plus for a phone which is why this is the phone I would buy with my own money. Thanks for watching see you in the next one.